From the magnificent Midwest, it's the Suzanne Venker Show, where men and women are equal in value, but wildly different by nature. Join us here every week as we challenge the culture's hugely flawed narratives about men, women, sex, and love. From coast to coast and from around the world, thank you for joining us. So I have a quick announcement for everyone. The Suzanne Venker Show is now going to be on video. I know many of you who listen to this podcast do so while you're doing other things, and you probably don't care about seeing me per se. I know that's the case for me when I listen to podcasts, but YouTube is a very different platform where video is pretty much the whole point. And my VA, Kelsey, has been begging me for a long time to make the podcast in video form. So I'm finally doing that. So today I'm going to talk about how to combine career and family in a way that actually works and that is obviously different from the way the culture teaches, since the culture wants women to be in the marketplace full time and on a permanent basis, which of course is a ridiculous expectation to put on women, most of whom still want to get married and have kids and need a roadmap that takes into account not only the needs of children, but women's changing priorities. So I'm going to start by reading an email that I received from a woman named Julia, who writes, hi, Suzanne, I'm a recently married, recently pregnant, recently ex-woke woman living in England, love it, trying to figure out the best course in life. First, thank you for your videos and podcasts. It's such a relief to have a role model in my life when it comes to marriage and motherhood, as all my friends, my workplace, and the culture around me is not an example I want to follow. I would like to work part-time or be a stay-at-home mother with several children. I think she meant and be a stay-at-home mother. But I am also restless, creative, full of energy and ideas, and I've trained as a scientist, and so I don't want to completely stifle that side of me. Could you please recommend any books by mothers who are also small business owners, you're looking at one, and who have found a successful way of juggling motherhood with a career that is more flexible and suits their needs compared to the standard nine to five. I am looking for inspiration. Many thanks. Julia. So a lot of people make the mistake of thinking that because I spend so much time talking about staying home and the needs of children in the early years that I think mothers shouldn't work at all. And that's definitely not true. I've never made that claim. I've never written that in in any of my books, nor would I, since I work myself. I wanted to read that email because it speaks directly to me in my life. And I know other women want to hear the answer to this question, to her question. So I'm going to begin with my own story. And then from there, back up and talk about four specific steps to combining family and career. So I'm a teacher by trade. I actually majored in education. I even studied daycare and attachment theory for my degree. Although in the end, I did wind up majoring in English education and taught middle school. And part of the reason I chose education was that I felt that it was a career that I could move in and out of throughout my life and still stay home with my kids. I also happen to love children and have spent the majority of my life taking care of them, going all the way back to high school when I did a lot of babysitting. I was also a, man, I was also a nanny during college and even worked in several childcare environments in the 80s. I guess I just dated myself. So I graduated, I was in college from 1986 to 1990 for anyone who wants to do the math. But ultimately I left teaching for a lot of reasons, which we won't get into, uh, when I was pregnant with my daughter, believe it or not. And I continued writing, which I had been doing on the side because writing is something that you can do from home. This was long before smartphones or before people were really working from home the way they are now. I never did go back to teaching in the classroom, although I still feel like what I do today is teaching. I chose to stick with writing, however, because I love it and because it happens to be a career that I can control. I work from home. I'm not at the mercy of a boss. I can say no to anything that conflicts with my personal life, and I did many, many times. And when my kids were home, I worked my schedule around their needs, which means I mainly worked when they were either asleep when they were little or later on when they were in school. In other words, because of very purposeful decisions I made along the way, I was able to stay home with my children and still have a career. Although it's clearly a very different kind of career than most people, it's 
a little off the beaten path. Although today, more and more, obviously, you see people on YouTube left and right, but it's still unusual. And I, the reason why I want to choose that, well, the reason why I read that email from Julia is because the truth is I'm really not that different from her. I too am very restless and creative, full of energy and ideas. So I get wanting to map out a life that incorporates that part of yourself. And I would encourage it. I think this idea that women have to either be employed or stay home and never earn a dime or do anything else is ridiculous. It's a false choice. In fact, I would argue that staying home is the perfect segue into having a more creative and flexible life because your time is your own and you don't have a boss. So with all that in mind, let's get back to the question Julie asked. How do you combine raising a family with the pursuit of something entrepreneurial? And I would even add to that the idea of part-time work. You can even, you know, in addition to the entrepreneurial, because those go very much hand in hand. At the end of the day, you just can't put a price tag on your quality of life and on the quality of your relationships, which are going to be front and center, both of those things, when you're, you know, in your 30s and 40s. So here's how I'm going to sum it up in a nutshell. The only way to successfully combine work and family is to think long term and plan well in advance by making very purposeful decisions along the way that will allow you to reach your goal. Now, a lot of women are late to the game on this. I understand that because they weren't encouraged to map out a life with marriage and motherhood at the center, which is essentially what I'm arguing. I'm saying the opposite of what women are taught to do. They're taught to put career and education and themselves front and center and try to fit marriage and motherhood in around this otherwise more, you know, this, this other priority. And I'm saying to reverse that. If you are late to the game, it doesn't mean you're screwed. It just means that the older you are, the more work you're going to have to do to course correct or to get back on some sort of path that will get you where you want to go. I don't want women listening to this to think the ship has sailed and they're out of luck because I don't believe that. But I do want to offer a blueprint for young women who need something different than the one the culture or even their parents are currently offering. Okay. So there are four main steps that I've put together here for how to create a life that centers on family, but still allows you the flexibility of having um, either a, a business of your own or part-time work or something entrepreneurial or whatever. Okay. Number one, choose a career that from the get-go, ideally, and again, we can change this later on, but choose a career that has flexibility or a part-time option, such as nursing or teaching or publishing, or, I mean, even some sectors of law and medicine are more flexible than others. Not every doctor or lawyer is, you know, headed for partner or brain surgery or whatever. You, there are ways to do it down the road, um, part-time. So just throwing that out there or work that can be done from home or a career that can be done from home. But flexibility is key here. Something that can be moved in and out of over time. Um, something that doesn't necessarily have to be done full time. Something that isn't on a track where you have to start here and just do nothing but work until you reach the top. You know, that's, that's, um, that's a value that if you have that, goal, you're going to have to deal with the costs. That's all I can say about that. But again, this, this episode is about how to um, combine career and, a career and family in a way that works and allows you to be successful in both domains. So that is the number one most obvious step to take is choosing the right career. And I don't think, well, I mean, I don't think I know that women aren't taught early on to do this from their college mentors, from their parents, really from anybody, because God forbid we talk about marriage and motherhood when you're 20, 21, 22, 23, but we're doing them a disservice at the end of the day by not saying, Hey, 10 years down the, down the line, your life is probably going to look like this. Certainly your priorities are going to shift and be thinking long-term when it comes to your career about how you want that to go, which 
again, this is with the caveat of understanding that most people's careers are not that linear, especially women's careers. They end up moving in and out. And there are plenty of people who do not end up uh, working in fields that they studied in or for in college. That's very common. So keeping that in mind as well. But to the degree that you can choose that in advance, choose it. The second one, and these are in no particular order because this one's actually the most important thing you'll ever do. And that is to marry the right person. This is very underrated. And again, because of what's going on with marriage in our country right now, not discussed, certainly in relation to a woman's trajectory. And yet it's <laughs> the most critical if you're planning on getting married. I cannot convey enough the significance of this choice. Who you choose to marry will have more effect on your happiness and well-being than any other decision you make in life. And when it comes to mapping out a life that works like the one that Julia is asking about, you need to marry a man who can support you in your goal and agree to take on the lion's share of breadwinning so that you can have this life that allows you to focus on the kids and still have something for yourself on the side. I mean, the reason why I have the life I do where I can choose when and how often to work as a wife and mother is because I'm married to a steady earner who not only has a very linear career path, but who supports my choices and feels as strongly about those choices as I do. Whether it was being at home with our kids, we're empty nesters now, or writing the books I've written. He is my greatest advocate and I really owe the life that I have to him. That's how significant your choice in a mate and a man and a spouse and a husband will be for this um, life that we're talking about. So that's number two. Number three, decide how many children you want or think about how much, let's just, let's just go with that. Think about how many children you want, because the reality is the more children you have, the longer it's going to be before you feel comfortable turning your attention away from the home, number one, and it's just going to be a lot harder to accomplish. And all of this, of course, depends on when you start, how old you are when you start. Um, but again, women live very long lives, longer than they've ever lived before. So there's so much more time than women believe or think or understand or are told we live a long time. I don't know how else to say it. I mean, you've got seasons of your life and you don't have to do everything at once, but if you want a larger family, chances are whatever that is, you're going to do on the side might be put off a little bit longer, or it might be a little bit, something a little bit less ambitious than you otherwise might be if you have two kids versus four or what have you, but you just kind of have to think about that with how many children you want. Um, that's going to have a, a bearing obviously on how um, much you can do other things for lack of a better way of putting it. And again, that's a decision that you want to make together with your spouse. So um, hopefully you're in agreement on that. So that's number three. And the last one, number four is also rarely talked about and so obvious really, but just ignored. And that is to plan to live near your family when the time comes. Having a baby is going to make you want to be near your family. And you don't think about this in your 20s necessarily. Well, depending on how quickly you get married and have kids. But unless you have some terrible situation with your parents, like you were abused or something, you're going to want and need their help when you have children. And this is incredibly important and something young people wouldn't know if their parents didn't warn them about it so that they could plan accordingly. Not only is living near your family going to make the whole motherhood experience more enjoyable, you could potentially get work done while your child spends time with his grandparents, which is a super important relationship to build anyway. So that's another sort of hidden um, secret to balancing work. No, forget balance. I did not say balance. I hate the word balance. There's no such thing as balance. That was a total lie. You don't balance anything. You just, you, I, in the, in the ideal world, I use the word combine because I'm thinking of a lifetime, how you're going to combine them throughout the course of your life. But the goal is that when you're 
focused on one work or family, you are there wherever you are. You're not balancing both because that doesn't work. So be wherever you are for that moment. When you're with your work, you're with your work. And when you're with your kids, you're with your kids, which is why, um, you know, working when they're sleeping or, or at school is ideal because you're completely focused on that and and on the work at that point, nothing else. And then when they're awake and around, you're on them. So that's what worked for me. Um, And I'm convinced that it did because I was constantly um, adjusting along the way from the time I was young. I mean, even I was married before, I think some of you may know this. And I knew that um, I I ended up getting divorced. I wouldn't have kids and I moved back home and I ended up marrying um, my husband uh, several years later. And that the, uh, going back to how I owe everything to him with the way my lifestyle goes, it's because I got that underway early on because I knew it wasn't going to work that way with my first husband. So, and I even moved from one part of the country to another um, with this goal in mind. So there, I'm living proof that there are options, but you need someone to sort of guide you and help you and support you in doing that. And the average woman today doesn't have that at all, which is why I'm doing this video or excuse me, podcast episode. I got to say that now. Um, So that those, those folks have another avenue, another roadmap for how to make this happen. If this is the goal and the support to do that, don't underestimate any of these choices, these four choices, who you marry, or marrying the right person, choosing a career that has the flexibility or part-time option, really thinking about how many children you want in relation to what those other goals are and planning to live near your family when the time comes. Again, you can see how the earlier you do these things, the easier it is, but doesn't mean that if you're, you know, if it's later down the road that you can't undo them or course correct, you can Um, but those, those four things are all critical factors in your ability to create the kind of life that Julia asked about in that email. In fact, that's probably a little more information than what she was looking for, but anyway, there it is. I hope it's helpful. And, um, yeah, let me hear from you if, um, you have any other questions about this or any other topic, Suzanne at the Suzanne Benker show.com. Thanks guys. Talk to you next time. And that ends this hour of the Suzanne Venker show. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast and to leave us a review as well as share this episode with a friend. As always, you may reach me with any questions or comments at Suzanne at the Suzanne Venker show.com. And if you would like to support this podcast, which would be very much appreciated, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash the Suzanne Venker show. Thanks everyone. Have a good week.